Hey everyone, Zach here from Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at Windows 11 build 22567 and all of the recent tablet mode improvements Microsoft has introduced to the Insider program over the last few weeks. So yes, for some reason Microsoft remembered that Windows runs on tablets sometimes and have decided to improve that experience significantly in the last few Insider builds. Uh, so diving straight in, let's take a look at what's new. Uh, you may have already noticed it, the taskbar down here has been minimized. Uh, and now it's designed to get out of the way. You know, if you're using Windows on a tablet, it's usually a smaller device, perhaps a 10-inch device, maybe 12-inch, 13-inch. Uh, you want to use as much of that screen as possible when you're within an app or apps. Uh, so now the taskbar is designed to get out of the way. Uh, to access it, I can just swipe up from the bottom here, and that will pull up the familiar taskbar interface. But it's now been thickened slightly as well. So the hit targets for these icons and stuff are now are much bigger. Uh, and that's a good thing for tablet users, of course. You know, it, you want big touch targets to be able to access things with ease. Uh, and then if I go ahead and open an app here, you'll see that the taskbar automatically minimizes to give my app as much display room as possible, which is really nice. Again, I can access it at any point just by swiping up from the bottom, uh, and that reveals the taskbar like so. Uh, now, uh, there are also gestures for accessing system elements, such as start. I can swipe up from the bottom again here to pull up the start menu. I can swipe up from the corner to access the quick settings panel. I can swipe in from the right here to access the notification shade, and I can swipe in from the left to open up my widgets panel as well. All of that works just like you would expect, except some of those gestures are now fluid gestures, as I like to call them. So what do I mean by fluid gestures? Well, in previous versions of Windows, uh, the animation was preset, which meant no matter how fast or slow I was doing it, or no matter the position of my finger on the display, the animation would complete before I was done doing it, essentially. So. Uh, you know, the, the widgets panel here is still doing that, so I can demo it to you. If I pull out the widgets panel slowly here, you'll see that it doesn't matter. It's just going to open fully, regardless of the position of my finger or how fast I was pulling out that gesture. The start menu stuff has been updated with fluid animations, as I call it. So now if I swipe up from the bottom here and then swipe up the start menu, you'll see that it follows my finger. It's stuck to my finger, and this makes the UX feel way more fluid. So I can pull this up really fast, or I can pull it up nice and slowly if I wanted to. Doesn't matter, it's stuck to my finger. It's not. It's no longer a preset animation. It's a fluid animation. It's following my finger. Same goes for the quick settings panel, as you can see here. It's pulling up slowly, or I can pull it up really fast. And then, of course, same goes for the notification shade on the left here. It's following my finger. And the UX, as a result, feels way more fluid. It's a big change. It's a subtle change, but it's a big deal for those of you who pay attention to that sort of design. The iPad and iPad OS does this very well. A lot of the gestures are fluid gestures. They're tied to your finger. They're not just playing a preset animation. Like I said, the widgets panel here is not yet fluid. Hopefully they update that before uh, this release finalizes. But yeah, you can see the difference and it really, and you can feel it. You may not be able to, you may not notice it as you're watching this video, but as I'm doing the interaction, I can feel that that is not a fluid gesture and it feels disjointed as a result. It's just, just popping out before I'm done initiating that panel. So that's the difference between fluid gestures and uh, sort of preset animation gestures. I think it's a really big deal and I think it will enhance the Windows 11 uh, tablet UX quite significantly. And I'm really glad to see it here running on Windows 11 finally. Now, Microsoft has also introduced the same sort of fluid gesture for minimizing apps. You've always been able to minimize apps on Windows 11 with a three finger swipe down, but that was a preset animation. In this build, it's finally no longer a preset animation. So I can use my three fingers here grab it and then slowly move it down. And as you can see, it's following my finger perfectly. I can move it all the way to the bottom or I can bring it back and that works as you would expect, which is pretty fancy. Uh, Microsoft has also introduced a snap bar, uh, which we have taken a look at in previous builds, but um, I think it enhances the tablet experience quite significantly. If we open up a few apps here, I'm gonna have to say settings as well. Uh, the snap bar makes it easier to snap into more than just side by side. Of course, you can still do that by dragging to the end. And I think that is the easiest way to initiate side by side snapping. But what if you want more than side by side? What if you want one on the left and then two apps in a quadrant sort of formation? Well, we can do that. So if we click these out of here and I start uh, moving the window around, you'll notice that at the top there, the snap bar, as I like to call it, reveals itself. And it allows me to initiate snapping grids of any kind using my finger. So I can now snap this into uh, the layer I was just referring to. And that's pretty nice, right? That, that's a big productivity feature that I think is going to make using tablet mode and initiating snapping grids in tablet mode way easier. There's also the updated resizing animation here, which kind of sometimes works. Let's get this side running side by side. Uh, oh, we've had a... 
a little bit of a bug there. There we go. If we do this sort of like that, you'll see that one of the apps, the, the app that isn't active will display its icon rather than uh, trying to resize both at once. And that's supposed to make the, the experience a little bit more fluid. Uh, and I think it does. It's not perfect, as you can see here. It still looks a little bit laggy, but it's, it's certainly working better than it did before, especially on older devices. So another new gesture they've added is within the start menu itself. You can now access the apps list and stuff straight using a gesture rather than having to tap on this tiny button up here, which as you can see, it's quite difficult to do. I just missed it a bunch of times. Uh, so now from, wow, really? From now on, I can just simply swipe over like so. And oh, oh, you see, that, this is another great example. This, this gesture is not fluid. It's a preset animation. I could tell instantly just by using it. Whenever I swipe over, no matter the speed, it's going to just play that animation to its completion at the set speed Microsoft has set. It's not following my finger. I could tell straight away the second I did that, that that was not a fluid gesture. Uh, and you will begin to notice that now that other areas of the system are fluid. Once you, once you sort of get a taste for it, you're like, oh, wow, that's very fluid. Oh, that's not fluid. It's a preset animation. It looks fine. It looks fluid, it's, but it doesn't feel it. When using it, it doesn't feel fluid. Uh, and that's a big deal. So yeah, um, that's hopefully they changed that to make that fluid as well. But you can now finally access the apps list using a gesture, which makes it a lot easier. Same for the recommended. If I had more uh, overflowing into the recommended menu, I could do that same gesture down here and it would pull up the recommended page and that would look pretty fancy. Now, I do want to quickly take a look at the touch keyboard, which isn't specifically new in these inside of preview builds. It's actually shipping already as part of Windows 11. But I just wanted to take a look at it because it's a huge improvement over the Windows 10 um, tablet mode keyboard. Uh, the gestures are nice, the animations are nice. The sounds are nice. And just th this experience makes typing on Windows 11 tablets uh, a joy. You know, we have access to our emoji panel down here, which also has GIFs, of course. We have um, our click cloud clipboard. If we have that enabled, we can start sort of seeing copied content across devices and stuff. That all works super well. We also have um, different keyboard layouts. We have a small keyboard layout here, which is great if you're using it uh, in your hand and you just want to do a quick type out with one of them, which is pretty nice. There's also the split keyboard, which is great if you're using it with two hands. Uh, and then we also have the traditional layout, which is a much larger sort of keyboard design with more controls and stuff, such as a function key, uh, which is for power users, really. And, you know, you get your number row at the top here, which is super nice. And all of these support swiping. So I can say, hey, and that works as expected. And this is powered by SwiftKey, I believe. Hey there. This is a test and that works as you would expect. So the swift key sort of swiping experience is here on Windows 11 as well. Uh, and that works pretty nicely as well. So those are all the big sort of changes to tablet mode over the last few weeks. There is another one that I can't really show you on this device, but Microsoft has changed it. So if you're running Windows 11 on a device with a sub 11 inch screen, I believe, uh, apps will automatically run full screen, which makes a lot more sense. This is a 13 inch display, so apps won't do that. But on a device with a sub 11 inch display, I believe it is anyway, um, apps will automatically run full screen. So if you're running on a Surface Go, for example, actually, I do have one here. Let's see if this will function as uh, it's supposed to. So yeah, here is a, a first gen Surface Go, which technically isn't supported anymore, but it has a 10 inch display. So if I tap on one of these icons here, you'll see that in theory, yes, it opens full screen like so. And that is the case for, I think every app here really, yes, every app that you run will automatically launch in full screen mode because that's what it's been designed to do now on Windows 11 with a device with a sub 11 inch display. So that's pretty cool. So uh, now we've done with all the tablet mode stuff, I did wanna just take a look at some of the other changes they've introduced to the Windows builds over the last few weeks, starting with uh, the quick settings panel. The Bluetooth setting here is now uh, more advanced. You can actually configure your Bluetooth devices and see their status straight through the quick settings panel instead of being thrown into the settings app now, which is really nice. All right. So if we jump into settings here, we can uh, start uh, taking a look at some other features here. Uh, Windows Update is committed to helping reduce carbon emissions. This is a new feature that Microsoft is working with its partners on. Uh, so this won't work everywhere in the world, but if you are in an area where it does work, uh, Windows Update will now try to install updates only when your electricity grid is using uh, renewable energy for the most part, or at least when it's using as much renewable energy as possible. And this by result will reduce your carbon emissions. Um, again, this won't work everywhere in the world, but if you are in an area where it does, um, Microsoft will try its best to sort of schedule updates where your PC is using as much renewable energy as possible. 
Uh, also new in the builds is a new UI for the sort of um, app picker when opening a certain file type that Windows isn't familiar with. As you can see here, we now have a brand new UI and this allows me to open or select an app here and choose allow always or just once, which is pretty nice. You can also browse apps via the Microsoft Store or go into a bigger window here, which will give you more control over which apps you have installed, which uh, is pretty nice. Now, another change Microsoft has made is they've added um, individual tabs to the snapping uh, layout whenever Windows suggests apps to snap. Uh, it will also include tabs now. So if I open up, say, a number of apps here. Oh, well, thank you for closing. Let's try that again. Let's try uh, bing.com. Just simple apps here. And then microsoft.com, maybe. Uh, and now if I snap this app to the side, you'll see that the other tab here is now being suggested. Even though I have only one app window open, the tabs are now showing up in this uh, sort of suggested window for snapping as well. And if I tap on that, it will pull out that tab from that window and create an, its own window for that web page, uh, which is pretty cool. So there we are. I think that's everything that we've really caught up on over the last few weeks. Thank you so much for watching and we shall see you in the next one. Bye-bye.